this is how the engine used to look like and people will go to me and say there's a lot of contrast and also like the bright areas it's all over the place and this is not pleasing to look like and the solution for this is you was usually to go ahead and for example the sky intensity uh, reduce it and you can see now i can see the sky but then there's a lot of stuff there is over uh, there's a lot of brightness so we go ahead and reduce the the sun maybe and all the other values the problem is the engine is pbr and in pbr which is physically based handling you want to have physically based light information like the sun needs to have a lot of brightness and also the sky uh, it's much brighter than i mean if you're looking at the wall and then you're looking at the sky you want the sky to be like very bright uh, but this is simply not possible it was simply not possible in the engine uh, because there was no hdr and no um, gamma correction no exposure so it would it basically looked bad uh out the way and i'm working on, on a fix for 1.2 in the engine and i want to show a little bit this is a bit of work in progress so um but i wanted to show you because this is interesting information anyways so i have a few images here this is the engine with no exposure and no hdr meaning that every pixel that goes above the 1.0 color threshold will get clamped to one this is why you can see the the sky here the sky is completely white uh, and this is why it, it was very hard to make P, uh, PBR stuff in Cave Engine before, even though the engine supported full PBR, like the materials were PBR. But again, you could not uh, take some advantage of this because there was no way to uh, bump the light intensity this much. Otherwise, you can see it's not good. So now the engine have HDR and it handles everything in a high dynamic range and then there's a, an automatic eye adaptation which is like what we call in, in computer graphics you can call something else that basically just like your eyes when you are in a very bright area and then you go to a dark area um, the the image like changes and, and then you start seeing stuff in the dark and the same thing when you go outside again to the sun um, your, your eye adapts to it now it's possible to do it, and this is in the same image here, uh, with eye adaptation goes from this to this. And you can see here that it adapted a little bit, and now it is possible to see um, a bit of the sky here. And again, uh, I'm not changing the settings, I'm just doing an eye adaptation, and you can see here... Um, that a lot of thing is changing because of this and of course if i look at the sky it will adapt even more and i'll be able to see all the details of the sky but again this still does not look good uh, because it's missing something that in the industry we call tone mapping so we need to um, again the name suggests do the tone, tone mapping and also there is still clamping going on because uh, you you can only handle that discrete stuff in your screen like your monitor it does have like a range um, a minimum and a maximum amount of brightness that it can uh, handle so you need to to clamp stuff inevitably and some engines and in, in the future cave will also do this uh, apply bloom when it's clamped because it's so bright of course but again we need to be a bit smarter when it comes to clamping this and handling the colors to your monitor. So we need to do tone mapping and last but not least, gamma correction. Gamma correction, I'm not talking about this because it's already gamma corrected. Um, and I'm experimenting, and this is the point of this video, I wanted to show a little bit of uh, the experiments that I'm making um, when it comes to, to tone mapping. And the first one that I want to show you is a very cheap one um, that is basically you, you get 1 minus x explanation of uh, the, the color uh, this is pretty much what learn open gl uses by the way uh, it's very simple and you can see the huge difference take a look at the sky and also the more darker areas with this you can see that now the sky is much more visible and this is super cheap like super cheap um it does not it's, it's not heavy at all um and we we went from like this to this in like a few steps but the colors still looks weird um, so we can improve this and this is why i've been experimenting with a bunch of different tone mappings for example i tried to implement aces which is like a very 
standard today um, and I got this which is definitely not good and it's probably my fault <laughs> but I wanted to show you because uh, it is interesting to learn how um, colors evolve or not so very nice um, and also um, tried this one which is like a neutral uh, PBR tone map that Kronos the ones that make OpenGL, Vulkan and so on uh, provides this is literally the code that they, they provided uh, in their repository. I just copy and paste it and apply this, this stone map to see. Uh, not good, <laughs> not good. Uh, it relies on a lot of other factor, uh, factors as well. Um, and then I tried AGX. AGX, uh, from my understanding, is something like Blender uses, which is like a very variant of the ACES stone mapping. Um, this is the punchy settings for the AGX and it looks very weird because it looks yellow. I mean, the scene itself, if you go to the uh, where we, we were before, the scene itself is uh, yellowish, but this looks a lot. And then finally I got, this is the default, I got the default settings for the AGX and you can see that it looks very good. Um, it is a bit desaturated, but my uh, my goal here is not to create uh, an art style specific settings. I want to create uh, neutral stuff that you as an artist can uh, control when using the engine because of course you can access the post-processing filters, you can con con um, adjust the contrast, the brightness and so on. My role here as a game engine developer is just to provide a neutral, uh, neutral image for you. And this is the work in progress. Uh, I think I'll go with this uh, tone map, but let me know in the comments if you have uh, another suggestion. I was also using the Uncharted 2 tone mapping, but it is a bit old, like Uncharted 2 came out like a while ago, um, and it feels weird, so I'm not using this one. And by the way, this is how uh, it looks like. And I wanted to show you a little bit of the um, eye adaptation. You can see the sky, it takes some time and then it adapts. Uh, this is with um, exposure, HDR, and then the AGX tone mapping. And if I really make the sky, um, the intensity is three, but if I really make it like nine, you can see Again, you as an artist, you can specify this wherever you want. But again, I can still see the sky, 26 intensity. But look at the, the ground here, because of course the sky is much brighter. So if I look at the ground, uh, the eye will adapt and then the sky will be messy. Just like uh, you can probably expect in the world, of course. Um, and this is very nice, right? Very nice. So you, you can do things do, uh, however you want. Uh, the same goes for the the sun. It's 10 here. can make it like 100. Um, and it will not going to completely explode everything. Um, unless you're looking at somewhere else. The sky is too bright. So let's make this a 1000. Now it starts to look weird. <laughs> you have to adjust this to fit your needs. But anyways, what is important here is that uh, it will adapt. And also I was testing this area here because this is like a shade area. Um, you can see how the, the eye adapts to it. And now it's like much shade. And of course I can reduce the ambient intensity a lot. And like right now I'm looking at mostly at the sky so it's very dark. But if I go ahead and get inside here you can see that I can uh, see everything. And I just realized that this is not touching the ground. Oh, it's because of the um, the displacement parallax. Anyways, so this is very nice. And before you ask, yes, you can click here uh, in the camera settings in exposure and adjust this because maybe, I mean, this is too dark, right? So, and here you can see it is too bright. So maybe you want to clamp this, um, you can do it. You can see like can max to two. So you as an artist, you're free to play around with this. So this is well, uh, this is the maximum that I want it to be bright. Uh, maybe you want to clamp how uh, the exposure will be minimal and so on. So you can do this. Uh, you're free to do it. And it's great that you have an option. And, and you can also completely disable eye adaptation. And then it will be up to you to adjust the exposure here. So we have to do this by hand. Maybe you're creating like an horror game um, and you want like this specific expo exposure. You don't want like a, a dynamic one. Um, so we can do it. By the way, I need to fix this. 
Um, anyways, this is the the progress, and this is what I wanted to show you. Um, let me know in the comment what you think if you have anything to add. Anyways, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Bye.